All right, great. Welcome to this section of ACI and ASICs. Let's understand the different ASICs that are being used in our ACI fabric, what their purposes, and kind of how this all works together, and what functionality and features we get from this process. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the idea behind ASICs. Why do we have them? Well, some processors, like the x86 processors and all of our laptops and everything, is a general purpose processor. It can do everything reasonably well, but it's not necessarily fantastic at any one thing. A little bit like an SUV, right? An SUV can haul things, haul groceries, carry people, go pretty fast, but it's really not the best to any one of those characteristics. Where if you have a, something that's specifically designed for a purpose, whether it's a bus for carrying people or a dragster for going fast, that purpose-built vehicle is going to perform better for that job. That's the idea behind ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. So we build chips that are super good at doing something very, very specific. All right? And it's one of the concerns when people start talking about, well, let's virtualize all these network devices. Well, it's very different than server virtualization. In server virtualization, we had a bunch of underutilized x86 servers and then we consolidated them onto less x86 servers, but still running the same processor. Where now our network functionality is running on custom ASICs, when we want to virtualize that over to x86 processors, we've got to be a little careful there, right? Because we might have to go ahead and add a good bit of more processing power, and the reality is, is our networks are not currently underutilized. And so we'll still have the same existing network underneath, now we have another network on top to run. But anyways, what type of ASICs do we have in our ACI environment? Well, we have a few here, all right? We see a few of these guys. We'll be talking about each of these and kind of what they do and what their functionality is for us. We see the NFE, all right? Our network forwarding engine. Now, the network forwarding engine, all right, is going to be kind of unique here. Cisco typically develops all their own ASICs in-house. This one, we're going to see we actually use the third party. We use the Broadcom chip. Broadcom Triton 2. We'll talk about why we did that and what purpose it served. We'll then take a look at some that are custom ASICs from Cisco, the application leaf engine and the application spine engine, and how these work together to go ahead and provide the fabric that we want to be able to use. So the NFE. Network forward engine. Well, when this was being developed, the idea was, let's get to market quicker, and why rebuild the wheel? There's already a lot of functionality built out there. And so the network forwarding engine currently uses something called the Broadcom the Trident 2 chip. And the idea was that basic encapsulation, decapsulation, some basic VXLAN functionality, it was already done, it was done well, and by going ahead and using some of that technology, it was to get that price a little bit lower. So this is going to be on a lot of our cards. It's going to be the, on our line cards. Typically, it's going to be the thing that first handles a frame when it comes into most of our line cards. What we need to be aware of is, okay, great, this is for 40 gigs. It has very high performance. But when we take a look at the number of ports, it's a little confusing. When we start looking at the number of ports, we see two different numbers here. It says it can support 32 40 gig ports. It says it can support 24 40 gig bit ports. All right. Well, when we look at what limits a ASIC, be from being able to handle more and more network traffic. It's two things. One is the amount of bandwidth being used. The other is the packets per second. All right? And that's where these two numbers come involved. If I have relatively good size frames, say frames greater than about 200 bytes on average, okay, in those scenarios, what I find is I can actually support 32 40 gigabit simultaneous conversations. Where if I have itty bitty tiny packets, now I'm doing lots and lots of packets per section. I'm actually going to be able to support only 24 of these 40 gigabit conversations. All right. And so it's kind of weird. You'll see these two different numbers. And so when you look at the high performance gear, you'll see the high performance gear is built around that 24 number. Always ensuring that you are getting your four 40 gig full 40 gigabits, no matter how big or how small a particular packet is, you are going to get your 40 gigs of bandwidth. And then we'll see other ones here, more access aggregation ones, what might be built more around the 32 number, where if the frames are greater than 200 bytes, then we get an average, we can support 32, 40 gigabit. Not a big deal, just be aware there's a couple different numbers here. We also see we have buffer, all right? Although generically 12 megabits doesn't sound like a ton of buffer, that's not bad. That's a good bit of buffer, can help us do a lot of our functionality, and really is used in several different cards. All right. The first thing we'll look where it's used is actually on the fabric modules. 
So the fabric modules, we know that in the 9000, there's no mid-plane, all right, that the fabric modules pl plug in the back and the line curves plug orthogonally directly into the fabric modules. Fabric modules, the chips that they have on them are the T2s. All right, so they have the T2s. Now, we have some different models of modular 9500s, 9504, 9508, and 9516. And short, medium, super tall, right? Well, the fabric modules come th those way as well, short, medium, super tall. The 9504 will have one T2. The 9508 will have two T2s. And the 9516 will have three T2s. All right, so these different ones will have different number of Trident T2s, all right, that uh, depending on what their actual needs are. And so as they get the bigger, they're going to have more of these T2s. So the first place we see them being used is on the fabric modules. Let's take a look at another location. Another place is on line cards. Some line cards only have Trident T2s, all right? So we're going to see we have two series of line cards. All right, that use Trident T2s. We're going to have the 9600 series and the 9400 series. These only use T2s and no other, they don't have ALEs or ASEs, just T2s. And what that means is they can run NXOS only. So the 9400, 9600, NXOS only. So I look in this one, I can see I have three Trident T2s. Now let's just go ahead and kind of practice our math here real quick. Okay, I see that this is a 9636. I know that there are 36 slots across the front. This is a high performance. The 9400 are high performance. The 9400 are the access aggregation. So a little bit of performance. So I know that this is going to be built around those 24 40 gigabit conversations. So let's think about it. I got 36 ports up front. All right. I have three Trident T2 chips in here. Well, when you do the math, you're like, wait a second, that's 72 40 gigabit conversation. Why do I need 72 when I only got 36 ports on this thing? Well, remember the communication from the chip's perspective is having two directions. I have frames coming in the front, so I have frames coming in the front ports here. So I, need 12, I have 12 ports coming this way, 12 ports coming this way, 12 ports coming this way, but I also need to communicate out the back to the fabric module. And so I have, for each of these, I have another 12 ports. And so each Trident T2, all right, if I want to go ahead and supporting 24 40 gigabit converse conversations, any size frame, I have 12 of the 12 will be front facing, 12 will be back facing. So out of the total of 72 possible 40 gigabit conversations, 36 are forward facing for the front ports, 36 are back end. And again, this is a 9600, it's high performance, so there's no oversubscription at any rate. Whether you're tiny frames, big frames, it doesn't matter. But these are NXOS only cards. They cannot be upgraded to ACI, all right, because they do not have the custom ASICs from Cisco to allow us to upgrade to ACI. When we start talking about custom ASICs, well, the first custom ASIC we're going to talk about is the ALE, the Application Leaf Engine, all right? Kind of looks like an alcoholic beverage, right? Ale, beer, whatever. But anyways, our ALE. So our ALE... This provides our leaf functionality. And so when we have our spine and leaf topology and we want something to act as a leaf, it must have an ALE, all right? The ALE gives us additional functionality, some of our VXLAN routing, as well as managing some of our policies, all right? Our policies get pushed down from the APIC to ALEs, and they give us a lot of that functionality to actually do the cool application policy infrastructure, our ACI infrastructure at the leaf level, this is where we do it. Where we're able to do our different lookups, ensure our policies, look at our source groups, destination groups, all that kind of stuff is occurring here. You notice it supports 24 40 gigabit ports. So when we start taking a look, where, where are we going to see these? Well, we're going to see them in a couple different kinds of cards. All right. Now we already talked about the 9400 and the 9600, NXOS only. All right. Now what we're going to find here is, with this, this is going to be our 9500 series of cards. All right. These can run in NXOS or ACI LEAF. When I look inside here, I see T2. I see a T2. So I still have my Trident T2s up front. 
But now in the back, I see my ALEs, my application leaf engine. All right. So our 9500 series, great card if they're going to already do ACI or if they're thinking about ACI later on. This card would give them the ability to run NXOS now and go ahead and move on to ACI later. This is also true of the 9300s, all right, excluding, I will say, non-spine. So our modular 9300s, excluding the spine one, the 9336PQ, our modular 9300s have the ability to do NXOS, all right, I'm sorry, our fixed 9300s, NXOS or ACI, because they have both the ALE, all right, they have both the ALE and the T2. Because they have both these chips, they're able to go ahead and run in either mode. So we have our 9500 series line cards or our, or our fixed 9300s, all right, are going to go and be an XOS or ACI leaf, all right? So that's pretty cool. So now we have our leaves, we have our NXOS only, but what about our actual spines? What about, whoops, what about when we want to keep our actual spines and say, hey, listen, how do I go manage these spines? How do I actually get my ASEs running in this environment? Well, let's take a look. So here's my ASE, my application spine engine, okay? We take a look, it's like, oh, great, it has a good bit of buffer. We see it has uh, 40, 42, 40 gigabit ports, but this is a special chip. This one runs, first of all, we need to know it runs, this is ACI only. All right, we don't run this in NXOS mode. Eee. This is ran in ACI only. And so these are going to be on our spine cards, all right, or going to be located on our spine uh, fixed, like the 9336PQ. And so that's pretty straightforward for these guys. So, you know, when people say, hey, I can upgrade my existing NXOS 9000s, over to ACI, well, you need to make sure you have the right kind of gear. You have the right ASICs in the right locations, so you're going to need to add some spines, probably the 9336PQ. So let's take a look what these guys look like. Whoop, I'll bounce back here. Is when I look at the spine line card, hmm, this is kind of a uh, different looking, all right? In the spine line card, I have my ASEs up front. All right, there's my ASEs. And so in the spine line cards, so this is going to be on the 9700 series or on if you're fixed on the 9336PQ, all right, which is a 9300 series specifically for fine, spine. So we have some different modules. So if we, if we recall, we have a few different ones now. When we talk about our line cards, we had NX, uh, NX OS only, a high performance version and a regular version, okay, that had just the NFE. We had ones that could be ACI LEAF or an XOS. They had the NFE and they had the ALE. And then finally we have the spine card and the spine card is used ACI only and is just run as the spine. Example of a few different cards here. If we look at that first card at the top here, I see, oh, this says NXOS only. That means I know it has the Trident T2, doesn't have any of the custom ASICs. This one here is listed as ACI access. I know that this can be ACI, act as a leaf, or it can run in NXOS mode. And then finally down here, I see the spine, and I know that is spine only, only ACI. So let's talk about our different product numbers. All right. Our product numbers, we're going to have, we're all going to start with a nine. All right. And kind of the way that I remember it is the even ones are NXOS only. All right. So the 9400 and the 9600, the 9400 and the 9600, those are NXOS only, all right? And if we take a look, these are the ones that are built around that 24 number, all right? So I see I have 72 total available, three times 24 gives me 72, so 36 ports, so that one's high performance. This one here says oversubscribed. Um, let's be careful with that word there because it's only oversubscribed at the average frame size is less than 200 bytes on some of these. Uh, and so you'll have to take a look at these. And just, if you, you, when you see on the Cisco website, the marketing people sometimes will say full line rate with a little asterisk, and you have to chase down the asterisk to find, oh, you actually mean for 
frame size greater than 200 bytes. But we have two of these. So the even ones are going to be at XOS only. All right. 9500. The 9500 series can do either. So we notice, we look, and it says, okay, what does it have in it? This has T2s and ALEs. So it has Trident T2s, uh, Broadcom T2s, and application leaf engines. So it can either run in XOS mode or ACI mode. And then finally, the 9700. The 9700 is going to be our spine. And that's going to give us our spine connectivity. That has the application spine or the ASE in it. Okay. So even numbers can only do an XOS. So next one I have 9300. Oh, that's an odd one. All right, nine, three of there. So I know it's going to be able to, all of them are going to be able to do ACI. Excluding the 9336PQ, this guy down here, notice this guy down here is a spine, right? So this guy is a spine. The rest of these guys can either be an XOS or an ACI leaf. And all these different models just give you different speeds. All right, so you can take a look at some of the different speeds and feeds that you have. All right, and so basically, you notice they have the ALE as well as the Trident T2. So we keep using those words, and we keep talking about spine and leaf. So let's go ahead and recall usage-wise when we set up our topology. In ACI, we require a spine and leaf topology. This is a very simple spine and leaf topology. I have two spines, and I have four leafs. Remember, in our basic topology, we know that the only thing in the world that connects to spines are leaves, all right? And the only thing that leaves connect to, well, leaves connect to anything. But the only thing that plugs directly into a spine is a leaf. And so when I configure a modular chassis, say a 9508, all right, the entire chassis is all spine or the entire chassis is all leaf. I cannot have the chassis do spine, some of the cards do spine, some of the cards do leaf, right? Because that supervisor module is either running as a spine or a leaf. But basically, we are, are all spine or all leaf. And so we can figure this. This is also known as a class topology. So you might see that terminology around here, all right? But what I want to point out is since this, is, this module is on ASICs, not our general, is we actually have been doing spine and leaf in Cisco for a long time, all right? We just really haven't talked about it much. And that's because we've been doing it inside of chassis, actually inside the chassis itself. And so this spine and leaf model, let's take a look at it from the ASIC. Let's dive inside of one box. Let's say I'm diving into inside a 9508 where I have just, we'll do, we'll do the simplest. I'm using just NXOS only cards. So this have Trident T2s. And let's see how things actually communicate in this environment and how things actually work inside the chassis. Now if I take a look inside the chassis, what I'm going to find is, first of all, let's make sure we're all the same thing. This is inside one 9000 series switch. All right, so I'm inside of a switch. On the back here, these are my fabric modules. Whee! And down front, I have three line cards. All right, so my line cards and my fabric modules. That really doesn't look like an M. All right, and so how do the ASICs actually compute? Well, you'll notice that each ASIC down here on each line card talks to all the ASICs on each fabric module. And if you actually follow this topology, what you actually find is two things, all right? First of all, you notice, hey, wait, those spine, th those on the fabric modules, they're not connected together. And if you actually look at this, you recognize that this topology that we use inside the chassis, this is actually a spine and leaf. And so, and it's a great analogy when you're thinking about ACI to remember that inside our big switches, we've been doing spine and leaf a long time. The fabric modules are the spine and the line cards it's actually on a per ASIC basis, but just think about the line cards being leaves. And just when we say, oh, what do you mean I can't plug anything to spine? Well, you would never try to plug a server or an end device directly into a fabric module. The only thing that plugs into fabric modules are line cards. And then everything plugs into line cards. Like, well, in ACI, the spines, you don't cable them together for data traffic, right? There's no data traffic running between the spines. Why not? Well, inside your switches between the fabric modules. You don't have high-speed data connections between your fabric modules, right? And so the spine and leaf technology that we're using in ACI has been used in lots of places. And even more importantly, it's been used by you. 
inside of your switches that you've been using for a long time. You've just not thought about it as spine and leaf because you really didn't have to. You simply plug the fabric modules in, you plug the line cards in. But as you're building up these spine and leaf networks, that analogy holds. For example, if you need more bandwidth between some of these different line cards down here, well, you would add more fabric modules. Well, if you need more bandwidth and a spine and leaf topology between the leaves, you add more spine, spine switches. You need more access ports. Well, if you need more access ports on a fabric, you would add more line cards, right? Well, if you need more access ports than spine and leaf, you add more leaves, all right? So this is really, if you think about ACI, it's kind of like we've exploded a switch into its components, broke it out into line cards and fabric modules, spine and leaf, and we do talk about ACI kind of behaving as one big leaf. The key behind this leaf and all this communications are these ASICs. So remember our three big ASICs? All right, the NFE, the Broadcom Trident 2. The ALE, the Application Leaf Engine. All right, the ALE is always paired with a Trident T2. All right, and the cards that have an ALE and a Trident T2 can run NXOS or ACI Leaf. The cards that have just the Trident T2 can run NXOS only. The Trident T2 is also used on fabric modules. The final one we talked about was the ASE, the Application Spine Engine. And the Application Spine Engine is the one that's used on our spine cards or on our spine switches. And so this is going to allow us to scale. ACI is scaled up to very, very huge environments. And it does this through the use of custom intelligent ASICs working together, working consortium with each other to ensure the scalability, the reliability, and the performance that we expect from our data center. Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful to you learning about Cisco, ACI, and the ASICs that are inside.